Right, let's talk about the Sidemen game. Welcome back to the Lawrence McKenna channel. It's good to have you guys. Of course, it's been a couple of years since I've actually commentated or co-commentated, didn't do it off my own fame, uh, a couple of years ago. And it is like the YouTube event to be part of, right? And I get it, like, you know, people all over the world say, hey, we have our version of the Sidemen, and I'm sure you do. But with this obviously being probably one of the biggest languages in the world, probably one of the biggest movements in the world, it's pretty special, like drawing over 2 million towards 3 million concurrent viewers at any one time on a YouTube link, not even on like TV where it's like, hey, we think we maybe got this many people, is kind of wild. And on top of that, like, there's a lot to say about what the Sidemen have actually done in order to get to even this point. I remember being at that first match. I remember being at Southampton, it was St. Mary's, I think it was. It was, I mean, it was a great event, but to now get to this, a full stadium after you were in Southampton, kind of out the way, you're now in London, you're now in West Ham Stadium or the Olympic Stadium in the first place. And things are, well, I mean, like this feels like an all time peak. But what was kind of weird was actually like, and I said this to a couple of people on the day, I was like, this atmosphere is great. But what's weird about it is I, I kind of like those, like I remember the intimate Sidemen games where it was like, those people felt like, whoa, like we are the people that got tickets. 60,000 people in a stadium, like that is a whole other level of atmosphere. There are often a lot of people there, of course, who don't watch a lot of football either. So they're of course this football element. And I kind of wanted to talk a bit about that. Like to an extent, like it's almost, it's a completely different thing. So I'm not criticizing it. And you know, obviously who would I be to criticize a charity football match? But you know, there's like this thing in there where it's sort of like, you just raised all this money and what, I'm, I kind of feel like Premier League teams could learn something from that. I kind of feel like the big marketing teams, the sides which, you know, run basically global football and European football could probably implement elements of what they see at a Sidemen match. That's not to say that they want to, you know, get 60,000 teenagers to 35 year olds or 36 year olds or 37 or 40 year olds or whatever it is in a stadium and parents and all those kind of things every week. But what I'm saying is you can learn something from raising money for people. You can, it's kind of like a weird reminder of what the old days of football was. Like this, obviously not before cameras, but you get my point, like this was all about the relationship with those people on the field, the want to see those people, those exact people. And it wasn't about like a league title or it wasn't about like any of those other, there was a, an element of representation of like you are me and I am you and my identity is like linked to you in a different way. And I get it, like, you know, maybe you still do that with football, but you know the weird thing, like these people feel closely linked to all of these guys out in the field and the people they don't feel closely linked to, they're kind of like, they just want to see them anyway. Mr. Beast is just an entity that sort of exists now. We don't know what Mr. Beast thinks and feels, really, even though we've seen him on podcasts. But it's cool to see him in real life. It's cool to like see him in the flesh running around and not, you know, it's kind of like looking at the Muppets. You're like, I know you don't have any legs, you're being operated from underneath. When you see them playing football, you're like, oh, you're real. And it's also kind of cool, I think that's another element here, to see those people make mistakes or see those people play into the drama and remember that what they're really there for on the day is to entertain to make an, a spectacle. Because very often in the Premier League, very often in any high stakes competition, you end up seeing a lot of people taking it so seriously and forgetting the level of enjoyment you get from football. The level of enjoyment you get from winning and losing, the level of enjoyment you get from seeing something technically brilliant is obviously good. But when you see KSI, who's in goal today and obviously did his like roaming thing at some point, but was in goal and you see him like almost deliberately rolling back and over the line, you're like, oh, you get it. Like, you get that if a goal goes in at your end, there's a one goal difference or a two goal difference, whatever it was at that point. And you know that adds an, epity, a, a, an element of jeopardy into the game, right? So that's cool. Secondly, there is the first goal. Ethan, Bazinga, Ethan scores first for the sidemen in the stadium of the team that he supports. Slides away on his knees. Now, I was happy because I was like in the perfect area to capture. So I could capture this picture, right? Zoom in on that, right? And I was like, whoa, like that is a moment for him. That is a moment of being able to relate to a Premier League football, being able to relate to someone else, and like a mass of people that you just don't get when you upload a video. Like it's kind of weird to see all those people in real life in that video 
that all the people that watch your videos on a weekly basis sort of going, I love you, I am here for you. That must be such an unusual feeling. You know the sentiment exists, but to quantify it and to score, like the mixture of scoring a goal, which you feels good if you're at five aside or in a park, mixed with real people, like you can see the crowd going crazy. That's wild. And then on top of that, obviously being a West Ham fan is kind of cool as well. Like playing at your team's home stadium. If I'd done that at Anfield, which I can only ever dream of, like I played obviously at Anfield, but, and that was what felt like living out a lifelong dream. I can't imagine how that feels for Ethan. And I'd love to know. Obviously, I've never quite reached the level of someone who, you know, warranted being on the field. And, you know, over the past year, obviously, that has sort of dipped a little bit even more because of whatever people's assumptions were about me. And, you know, I'm not, not too good to think that I deserve to be on that field. Like, there are, the, the numbers just are insane for everyone out there. And what I mean by that is, like, these people have all worked so hard and it's clicked and they've grinded and it's, you know, they've done all the right things, made all the right decisions. Of course, they deserve to be held up in some fashion. They deserve to have this like moment of elation, this moment of like a really unique human experience. It's something they will show their kids for generations, strangely, because, you know, everything else was such an achievement. But this was like the focus, a tentpole, the... the epicenter of all those things. Maybe not the epicenter, because that's where it would emanate from, but you get what I'm saying. And they use that for two point something million of good, and probably more post game, right? Like last year's game got 26 million views. This had concurrent, like two million something views. It's insane, and a load of people benefit from it, right? Like people want to be involved in that charity match. First of all, to be involved in a big charity game and to raise money for charity, but secondly, because boy, does it raise your, raise your profile. Like the amount of social media posts, the amount of instant edits that I've just seen from people and obviously even videos like this, like that's insane. I think one thing I really love to see is the game to get even more competitive. Like, you know, for there to be a like preparation for this, which seems a lot more evident, like for it to be built up to, to kind of make a little series about it. And I'm sure the Cybermen and Side Plus and stuff have done stuff like that, but like for that to like penetrate everything, for it to just be like all over the place. Cause you know, on the day, obviously you can raise a lot of money and I think they probably do raise a lot of money and they build up to it. And someone's probably gonna correct me and be like, yeah, they do all this anyway, but like, for there to be a series of like the YouTube All Stars, those other things, for them to have to be put out across multiple channels, those kind of things would be awesome. And then on top of that, for it to be like, no, this is like, there's some competition here. Because I love, obviously I love that like, you know, that element, I spoke about that, about the, you know, the rolling back over the line, making it a competition. But like, you know, you can take something from the All Star game, maybe at the end, you know, my wife and I were discussing it on the way home, we were like, could you have done like a penalty shootout at the end and just been like, we're just gonna see penalties, something competitive between these two, and it gives everyone a moment, you know, like everyone then gets their clickbait, like I scored a penalty in, I did this, do you know what I mean? So there's that too. And then I also just think in general, they got rid of a couple of people from the States who were very good at football. Harry Panero obviously didn't play. Uh, there's some speculation around that, which I, I just think is like, obviously just good for drama, but probably not have any basis. And then on top of that, it's like, you know, it would just be cool to see like an even higher quality game of football because this is good quality, but there are times where you're like, oh, fitness, that's so important. These Premier League footballers are the, some of the fittest people in the world, athletically, you know, obviously there's marathon runners and all sorts of things. Anyway, that, that also counts. And I feel like that would also then get the match even further. Seeing these like good niche moments is great. And there were some amazing goals, really good runs, but to like, raise that level to have like some coaching sessions, do you know what I mean? That would be truly awesome. But I think that changes the product and maybe it changes it away from what the Sidemen want it to be. Maybe they just want to be like, cool, we dip in, we do the charity things, bit of fun, whatever, done. Maybe there's not a whole other product that I'm talking about here. If you're in it, get at me, cause you know, I feel like some ideas here, do you know what I'm saying? And cause I'm not involved with a big channel anymore, people therefore don't think I didn't, people think I didn't build anything, which is rubbish. I built something. I just don't own it. And I don't have any right to it right now. But you get my point. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I, I guess it, it warrants sort of acknowledging like that. But then what, like I said, there's this Premier League element, right? Where every week could we have on Sky or on whatever broadcaster it is, like, hey, if you're feeling this, 
go donate to this charity, go do this. Like, it feels like there is an element of we can show people a way of harnessing all the good, all the positive, all of the meaningful sentiment that you have towards your team, towards societal good. And for some reason, like, we kind of miss that every week. And I kind of feel like maybe we'd evaluate the players and the events maybe differently if it was like, oh, a reminder, these people do charity. These people are doing it for your happiness, for like your good. No one's evaluating, I mean, obviously you can evaluate the grade, but like, you know, no one's meaningfully evaluating the, oh, did he have a good game or a bad game? By the way, it was Chris MD who had the best game. <laughs> it was Chris MD. Um, and Chunks, weirdly, like Chunks, there was one point where Chunks and Philly kind of took over the vibe on the field. They made sure that speed took a penalty. They made sure that like, Everything was ticking and it felt like, oh yeah, like you guys get this. You know that the meaningful spectacle here is speed taking a penalty against KSI and it's not just someone else's story, someone else's moment, even though Chris MD had obviously won the penalty. I think Chris had won the penalty, right? So there's that. And then of course there is like, I've seen behind the scenes with the, the companies that organize this, how much effort went into that. The other element of that is how much effort goes into organizing a match day on a weekly basis on the Premier, on, in the Premier League. Like, how often do we just overlook that? How often do we just go, oh yeah, like, of course you just gather 60,000 or 70,000 or 40,000, whatever people in a stadium, and everything always pretty much goes right, you know? Like, the police are there and all these things. Do we, like, overlook how difficult it is to do that? Because I've seen that, that behind the scenes firsthand, like, how hard that is. And then, of course, I didn't get to hear Stephen and... Spencer's commentary, but I did sort of see that people loved it. And obviously I love Steven and Spencer, like, you know, I'm very close with him as well. He, he's a really, he's the, per they're the perfect dream team for this. Would I have loved to be the Sidemen commentator? Yes. Did I warrant it this year? No. But would I have loved to have been involved? Yeah, like I actually think so. And you know, when you take photos of other people, like that's obviously a passion of mine. I always, I don't know, like on a non-critical level, I'm always like, God, I'd love to, I wish, um, I wish some of the people that I like worked in the space saw me in the way that I uh, would like to be seen so I can help with these kind of things. Because I'm not quite like enough status to be like, oh, you should try this. And also I've got loads of experience in that space. So there's like, oh, I'd have loved to have been involved in this. But they've all got their guys who do that kind of thing, right? And then of course it was in the perfect hot day in London. It was like 30 degrees inside the stadium. The sun was beaming down onto, the, onto this like perfectly lit pitch. West Ham as an atmosphere, I've been there, is different to a game like this. A Premier League match is obviously different to this. People, obviously I felt bad for Theo. That was a weird moment when Theo went off. Like everyone was kind of appreciative of him and it was I hope he's okay. Like, obviously, I think he looks all right now. I've seen, I think I've seen some voters of him. I don't know if I have. Um, you know, like, I, I wish, I wish he's all right. Yeah, anyway, uh, I kind of just wish there was this appreciation in the Premier League of what was going on at levels like this. What could be learned from these kind of, I feel like the NFL, the NBA maybe do appreciate and see and learn things from these kind of events. They get it, like All-Star Weekend or the Pro Bowl or... Just in general, like the Americans are good at cooking all of this into one big thing. And the British are almost like, we got the event done. Like, let's just, you know, we got the event done. Do you know what I mean? And that's cool. You sort of need a creative director sometimes. And the side men do such a good job of it. Like those guys have learned, and I think this is the thing, to hand off to people who can just make you fly to the moon. So overall, I say congratulations. Not that you need it from me, like you guys have raised lots for charity. I have only raised a small amount in comparison, though I have still raised money. Uh, obviously, it, at some point this comes to an end uh, because maybe the side men don't exist anymore. But I, I guess the sentiment that I felt today, because you know what it felt, so to be honest, like a few people were like, oh, last year was amazing. This year was good, but last year was amazing. So the sentiment was like, this is still awesome, but how do we like take it further? And I feel like that's where like, because of the Sidemen, I've got this like blessing thing on the rest of the UK and to extent like Chunks and Philly and the Bait Squad do too. They could make this into something that is like bigger than them, which isn't Soccer Aid, you know? Cause Soccer Aid's not this. Like Soccer Aid is, you know, that is a 
corporate it's a different event you know there is like a veneer to all of that and to an extent there's a veneer to this you feel the connection with a lot of those people the commentary is different like it's there's an in joke there's an you're in on everything do you know what i mean the assumption is you know what this means whereas in soccer aid there's an element of context there's an element of formality around it this is maybe similar because of all the brands involved but you get what i'm saying there's like this is the youtube in youtube loves this so broadly like really it's it's in praise of the side men and what they're doing but really it's like the think on where you can go next with it how you can make it even bigger i'm sure like i have thoughts on that i'm sure they don't need them i'm sure they've got like you know a billion different ideas and you, they probably would laugh at someone watching this video and being like oh you think you've got thoughts oh that's cool guy with not even 100k subscribers good luck with that anyway uh you know sometimes it makes you realize how small you are or how insignificant you are in the YouTube uh, space. Uh, and I mean, in the nicer sense, in the like, you know, there are people who are doing amazing things in the YouTube space and have a genuinely brilliant connection with their audience. And if I'm honest, that's something I really like long for. I don't want to be a daily vlog, like, you know, your streamer, but I'd love to have like, I think what I really enjoyed and seeing was like people who get it, I haven't always gotten the side men because I'm not that generation that they spoke to. I got it, like, you know, I get KSI. I, you know, I get why it makes sense. But I wasn't, I was just slightly ahead of that wave. I'm obviously older than them. So I always got it, but like I was never in it. Do you know what I mean? And there's times where I'm like, oh God, like, I would love to, I love, and obviously I'm building something here. I love and would love to build an audience that get what it is that I'm trying to achieve. So, you know, I hope you guys stick around for that. Uh, yeah, it was a really great event today. I really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot to uh, Stu and Upload for the tickets. I really appreciate it. It was great to see everyone there. You know, I can't name all those people. Lovely to sit in front of Thogden and Seb. Thogden's match commentary, like, it is, is iconic as you would think. If, you know, when you see him in the vlogs, I'm like, yeah, you don't do that every game. And he does that at every game. Lovely to see everyone there. Really great to be involved. And, uh, you know, obviously go donate to the charity because it's charity and it is a fantastic cause. There are lots of fantastic causes in, uh, attached to them. Hopefully in time, I might put, some, I took a load of photos. Not all of them are great. I think the Bazinga one's probably the best one. But like, you know, there were some good pictures there. So... I will chat to you guys in a little while. Thanks for stopping by on the channel. That was my think piece that no one really needed and was probably a little too introspective. But see you guys in a little while. Much love. Bye.